All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Life by Misadvent Misadventure. <laughs> Let's cut that and try that again. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Life by Misadventure, my um, video cast that I'm doing. So yesterday, I mentioned the fact that I wanted to get into doing something a little bit more meaty than just doing daily updates about, hey, I did this thing and I went here and I did that and like my lighting setup is different and whatever. So in that, I did mention that I had looked at some of those sort of, you know, 52 questions and 52 weeks things. So um, last night or earlier today, I downloaded one of the lists just to see what types of questions there are on there and see if it would fit with what I want to do. And I see what they're trying to do with this. What they're trying to do is is the idea behind this list of questions is that you answer them all and then they take all the answers. And what there's the way it's supposed to work is that they send an email to the person that you buy the package for. So if, say, for example, it might be for my mom and I would buy the package as a gift for her, say, for Christmas. And then what they would do is they would send her one email every week with a question and she's supposed to write the answer out. And then she can attach pictures or whatever to it and then submit it to the site. They collect all of that stuff and then they turn it into like a book at the end of it. But obviously my, my idea was to do it more with video. So I wanted to see if I thought these questions were useful because, again, I, I have a, an idea of what I want to do. And I thought maybe some of these these questions might be good prompts. And... They're okay. It's not kind of, it's not kind of the way that I want to go with it because I want to do it more like a, almost like an autobiographical type thing, as opposed to, you know, they're more like tell me about your mother, tell me about your father, and all that sort of stuff. Which those things will come, but they'll probably come as parts of other stories, if you know what I mean. I mean, I'll do a little bit, and I might do a bit on my parents, and you know, my mom was, my mom and dad were born in Memphis, and you know, those sorts of things, but I don't, um, I don't know. But the core question, I think they do have some good core questions. So questions one and two were things like, you know, what's your full name? Why did your parents give you that name? Uh, you know, and then when and where were you born? Describe your home and your neighborhood and that sort of thing. So I think that might be a good place to start. And I guess the first thing I have to say about that is that I never, ever, ever use any personal information in any of my online accounts. I don't use it for, um, I don't use it for passwords. I don't use it for secure questions. I always go to the obscure questions that have nothing to do, and anything I say on here isn't going to be included in any of that. So, if you think you're going to access any of my accounts by going in and trying to, trying to use any of the information that I'm going to say on here, you're going to be sadly disappointed. And I'm not going to mention my birthday. I will talk about the fact that I was born in 1969. So I am the very last of the 60s uh, generation. And um, I, I say that with pride a little bit. But other than that, I'm going to try and shy away. Oh, yeah. Rules of engagement. That's that's where I was going with that. And I think the other thing I was thinking about last night is, is that I think as I get into this and start to share stories and more information, I need to be very conscious and careful of talking about other people. And because I've gotten up to some shenanigans in my life and I've had some misadventures and I've had misadventures with other people and I need to be conscious and careful that I don't overshare too much information that might get anyone else in trouble or anything. Again, I don't ever expect anybody to see this or anybody to watch it, but I think I'm going to have to, I'm just going to have to say my friend or, you know, use some pronouns or something to talk in general about people and really try and be conscious to not give away too much because this story is about me and I want to keep it about me. I don't want to keep it, I don't want it to be about other people but I am conscious I need to do that. So sometimes I might end up telling a story in some convoluted way because I don't want to use someone's name. And then you start getting into, you know, we might get into, oh, well, then there was this guy and then there was this other guy and it's going to be 
difficult to say, well, guy number one and guy number two, like I'm going to have to work that out and figure out how to tell stories in a way that I don't have to mention those people. Because normally if I was just telling the story, I would, but because of the nature of YouTube and online and everything else, I have to be very, very careful about how I approach that. So, um, I'm going to have to figure out how to get around that a little bit, but anyway, we'll see where it goes and I'll start with some easy information and maybe we'll, we'll go from there. I don't know. Um, yeah, so th that was the, the main thing and yeah, so my name's David Mark Brown. I was born in Memphis, Tennessee in 1969. That was a time, you know, that was the time before internet and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, my 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 mom and my dad lived in Memphis in the city and then my grandparents lived outside of town and we had they had a, a house that was on 35 acres and my great grandmother lived next door to them on a five acre plot and it was very very country you know we were on an old country road there were no houses it was just forest on the other side of the house there was a nice big lot on the side all of that area now that's in a, a suburb of Memphis called Germantown and that whole area now is all subdivision, hundreds and thousands of houses all around it. The old house that my grandparents had that, that my, my, my mom grew up in is still there. And um, in fact, the last time I went back to Memphis, we went by and, and saw it. If I can dig out the picture of the house, I'll try and add it as a little bit of uh, a B-roll on, on top of this maybe. Or I might need to go back later and, and try and do it. Oh, that's another good point while I'm thinking of it. These might take a little bit longer to produce if I want to do it well. Because I may, I may bring up something in the conversation that I didn't expect to like talking about the, the old house. And I know I do have a picture of it, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it immediately to be able to put it into the video and have that video out tonight. I think that's the thing. So some of these might take a little bit longer for me to get out. So even though I might record something every single day, I don't know if I'll be able to get them out every single day. I'm absolutely going to endeavor to do that. But anyway, just a, just a warning. Um, yeah, I mean, it was a, it, it was a much different time. Um, my, my grandparents and my great grandparents, um, were, very active in the local community. My my grandfather worked at a bank for 25 years, and then he was a real estate agent for another 20 years in in Germantown. And my great grandparents and my ancestors donated a lot of land in Germantown. There's a Germantown's known for a big charity uh, a horse show that they have every year, and my family donated the land that the horse show arena was built on, and and the park that surrounds it, and also Germantown High School. At least, I don't know if it's still there in the same location, but at least the old place in, in right in the middle of central Germantown where the high school was, we had donated that land also to the city to build public facilities on. So that was the reason that we gave the land to the school. So, you know, when I was young, I used to go hand out, you know, the ribbons at the horse show and stuff at night. And, um, you know, when I couldn't even walk, they'd have to carry me out there because, you know, I couldn't I couldn't reach the horses and stuff. I wasn't I was able to walk, but I couldn't reach them on the horses to give out the ribbon. So that was a funny thing. Maybe I'll talk about that separately in another one. But I basically grew up in the country, um, spent a lot of time with my grandparents. My parents got divorced when I was a year and a half old. So I spent most of my most of my time with my mom alone. She did get remarried later, and we'll talk about that. But, um, but yeah, no, it was, it was nice. It was, you know, a lot of time spent outdoors, running around, getting in trouble, running around in the woods. Didn't really have to worry about much. And then, aside from their house, we had another three hundred acre farm uh, down in. I don't remember where it was. I'm sure my mom will put something in the comments if she sees this. But. Um, Anyway, we had a we had a big tract of land out there. Now we didn't farm that land ourselves. We we had like um, farmers would rent the land from us, and then they would either plant. I think they rotated crops between cotton and soybeans. Um, I definitely remember going out and picking cotton myself when the cotton was planted in the field. And I can tell you that's no that's no fun task. It absolutely just tears your fingers apart and your hands. 
and um yeah, it was a it was quite an interesting experience, and not many people have said they've picked cotton when they were a kid. But there you go. Um, I mean, that was those are my earliest memories, really. Um, my grandfather taught me to drive a tractor when I was about seven years old, and I used to drive the tractor around. We had a a field next to their house, and it would grow long grass, and so we had to cut the long grass down. And so we had a, a an old Massey Ferguson tractor. It's a big gray thing. And we had a what we call a bush hog, which is like a big mower on the back. And so I learned to drive, you know, driving that tractor around with the bush hog on the back and then later riding lawnmowers and all that sort of stuff. But there was no like nobody cared. I, I drove a car when I was like 13 years old, even though I wasn't supposed to. But everybody lived in the country and everybody drove and nobody really thought too much about it. Um. What else? I mean, I I lived all over the place, so we moved quite a lot. And so it was, I didn't have like a normal childhood where you were, you know, your parents lived in one house and you grew up in that one house. And like my wife, you know, she, her parents have lived in the same house her entire life. They've never moved. All their kids grew up, lived and grew up in the same house and they still live in that house. And I, I don't even, I can't even conceive what that's like. I think when I was about 17, my mom and I sat down and worked out that we'd lived in like 56, at 56 different addresses, you know, o- over time. And yeah, so that was, you know, I, I feel more like in myself, I feel more like almost like a military brat because I've had to move around and I've moved around so much. And that, I think as I, I didn't really realize what the impact of that would be when I was young, because you don't think about that stuff when you're young. But as I got a bit older, I started to look back and realize that I had attachment issues in that I never got attached to anything because I was so used to moving and changing schools and moving around. And, you know, I, I don't know anybody. I literally don't know anybody that was in my life until I was about 13 years old. Um, and, you know, a lot of people have, you know, friends that they went to school with in kindergarten and that they've been friends with their whole life. Well, I don't even know any of those kids anymore. I couldn't tell you who they were. So I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that's how it is. And I think there was a point that I did feel a little bit aggrieved about that. But I've actually come to the point where I've just realized that it's part of who I am. And I actually quite like who I am at the minute. And all of that stuff that happened to me or, you know, that I did and all the misadventures that I had along the way, they just made me who I am now. And if I hadn't had those misadventures and that stuff happened to me, then I wouldn't be this person and I don't know where I would be. So anyway, I reckon we'll get into all that stuff later. So this is just a little bit of a a primer, I guess, to try and get me comfortable talking about this stuff and, and figuring out how to do it. But yeah, yeah, born and raised Memphis. Um, it's probably worth mentioning how I ended up in the UK, although that will be a totally separate story. But basically I moved to the UK in 1999 because I was working for a tech company that was based in Austin and they had a UK office and the guys in the UK and I basically talked about it and they said, look, why don't you come over and work for us over here? So I thought it would be, you know, a bit of fun to get out the US, have a little look around, see what other places in the world were like. I moved here and yeah, like I said, at the end of 1999 and I've been here ever since. So this is my 25th year in the UK and I'm 54. So that's nearly half my life I've spent in the UK now. And, you know, a couple more years, it will be more than half my life. I will, I will have been here. So again, that's a totally separate story. We'll talk about that and how I got, how I got here and why I'm still here later. Um, Cool. I think the idea is to just cover one single thing kind of every day so that these don't get too long. I mean, where are we now? We're 14 minutes in. So I want to keep these. I don't want them to be too long, but I also want to give enough time. If I'm just talking about something and I take 40 minutes and I'm going to take 40 minutes if, it, if that's what it takes to get the story out. But I'd like to keep them sort of to half an hour or less anyway, just to keep them short and sharp and keep keep them interesting for people so anyway i think we'll stop there for tonight and um yeah hopefully i'll be able to 
find some pictures of the old house and stuff that I can drop in so you can see some of those and maybe a picture of the horse horse show grounds or something. I'll try and add that in when I talk about that as well. Um, but we'll see. Just depends on on how quickly I can get it out. But um, yeah, so that's the first one down. We've broken the seal, so let's see where we go from here. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. If you're interested in any of these stories or anything, please don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell button. Again, I'm going to try and do it every day, but I may not be able to. So you might want to have the bell turned on just if you are interested in, in any of this randomness, then um, then you can come back and, and hear about more misadventures. So until then, I will see you. Well, until then, take care of yourself. Enjoy your day. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.